Trojan War is one of the most famous conflicts in human history, but it resides somewhere, within the space between fact and fiction. The myth is just as much a part of the tale as the actual history. In this video, we will explore one of the most famous stories the Trojan War of all time. This epic war was fought between the Greeks and the Trojans over the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. How did this war start? Who were the heroes and villains? And what lessons can we learn from this ancient tale of love, betrayal, and revenge? To answer these questions, we will rely on the oldest and most authoritative source of the Trojan War, the Iliad, an epic poem composed by Homer around the 8th century BC. Homer is widely regarded as the father of Western literature, and his poems have influenced countless writers and thinkers throughout history. The Iliad tells the story of the last year of the war, focusing on the deeds and fates of two legendary warriors, Achilles and Hector. But before we dive into the Iliad, let's set the stage for the war. Troy was a wealthy and powerful city-state located in what is now Turkey, across the sea from Greece. Its royal family was descended from the gods and included King Priam, Queen Hecuba, Prince Hector, Princess Cassandra, and Prince Paris. Paris was a handsome and charming prince, but also a coward and a troublemaker. One day, he was invited to a wedding feast on Mount Olympus, the home of the gods. There, he was asked to judge a beauty contest between three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each goddess offered him a bribe. Hera promised him power, Athena promised him wisdom, and Aphrodite promised him the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris chose Aphrodite, and she revealed to him that the woman he desired was Helen, the queen of Sparta and the wife of Menelaus, a powerful Greek king. Paris then sailed to Sparta, where he was welcomed by Menelaus as a guest. But while Menelaus was away, Paris seduced Helen and convinced her to elope with him. He also stole some of Menelaus' treasures and sailed back to Troy with Helen. This was a grave insult and a violation of the sacred laws of hospitality. Menelaus was furious and vowed to avenge his honor. He asked his brother Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae and the leader of the Greeks, to help him wage war against Troy and recover his wife. Agamemnon agreed and summoned the greatest heroes of Greece to join the expedition. Among them were Odysseus, the king of Ithaca and the cleverest of men, Dians, the king of Argos and a fearless fighter, Nestor, the king of Pylos and a wise counselor, Arjux, the king of Salamis and a mighty warrior, and Achilles, the son of a mortal king and a sea goddess, and the best of all the Greeks. Achilles was invincible in battle, except for his heel, which was his only weak spot. The Greeks gathered a huge fleet of more than a thousand ships, and set sail for Troy, but they faced many obstacles along the way, including storms, monsters, and the wrath of the gods. The gods were divided by the war, as some favored the Greeks and some the Trojans. Hera and Athena supported the Greeks, because they were angry with Paris for choosing Aphrodite. Aphrodite and Apollo supported the Trojans, because they were related to them. Zeus, the king of the gods, tried to stay neutral, but he often intervened to balance the scales. Ars, the god of war, joined the Trojans, because he loved bloodshed and chaos. The Greeks faced a significant hurdle in the form of Artemis, the hunt and moon goddess. Agamemnon's killing of her sacred animal incited her wrath, halting the winds and the Greek fleet. To placate her, Agamemnon made the heart-wrenching sacrifice of his daughter, Iphigenia. After nearly a decade of journeying and battling, the Greeks arrived at Troy, a city fortified by towering walls and valiant warriors, led by Hector, Priam's eldest son. The ensuing war, lasting another decade, was marked by numerous battles and casualties on both sides. Attempts by the Greeks to penetrate Troy's walls were thwarted, as were the Trojans' efforts to repel the Greeks from their ships. The war seemed locked in a stalemate. A pivotal moment in the war was the duel between Paris and Menelaus, who agreed to fight for Helen, with the victor claiming her as his wife and ending the war. However, Paris was no match for Menelaus and would have been slain if not for Aphrodite's intervention. She whisked him away to safety, reuniting him with Helen. The failed duel meant the continuation of the war. The war took another turn with a dispute between Agamemnon and Achilles. Agamemnon, forced to relinquish his prize, Briseis, to appease Apollo, demanded Achilles' slave girl, Chryseis, as compensation. Achilles' refusal and subsequent withdrawal from the war, coupled with his plea to his mother, the Tees, to persuade Zeus to aid the Trojans, dealt a blow to Greek morale. The Trojans, invigorated, launched an assault on the Greek ships, led by Hector. He slew many Greeks, including Protesilaus, the first Greek to set foot on Trojan soil, and Patroclus, Achilles' closest friend. Patroclus, disguised as Achilles in an attempt to intimidate the Trojans and protect the ships, was recognized and killed by Hector, who claimed Achilles' armor as his trophy. Patroclus' death was the catalyst for Achilles' return to the war. 
Overwhelmed by grief and anger, he vowed to avenge his friend. Armed with new, superior armor from Hephaestus, he returned to the battlefield, cutting down Trojans until he confronted Hector. In their epic duel, Achilles' speed and strength prevailed. He killed Hector, tied his body to his chariot, and dishonored him by dragging it around Troy's walls. This marked another turning point in the Trojan War. The Trojan War was marked by the death of Hector, leaving his father, Priam, in despair. In a desperate act, Priam pleaded with Achilles, the killer of his son, to return Hector's body. He invoked the shared experience of fatherhood, stirring Achilles' empathy. Achilles, moved by Priam's plea, returned Hector's body and allowed a truce for the funeral. The war, however, was far from over. Achilles, despite his invincibility, had a weakness, his heel. Paris, the instigator of the war, exploited this vulnerability with an arrow, guided by Apollo, leading to Achilles' demise. His death was a significant loss for the Greeks, who honored him with a grand funeral. Yet, the Greeks still had their most cunning hero, Odysseus. He devised a plan to end the war using a giant wooden horse, concealing elite warriors within it. The horse was left outside Troy as a supposed peace offering. Sinon, a spy posing as a defector, convinced the Trojans to bring the horse into the city, warning them not to harm it to avoid Athena's wrath. This clever ruse marked the beginning of the end for Troy. The Trojans, weary of war, accepted the Greeks' gift, a horse, unaware of its deadly contents. They celebrated their perceived victory, leaving the horse in the city square. As night fell and the city slept, the Greeks hidden inside the horse emerged, opening the city gates for their army. The Greeks decimated Troy, killing King Priam, his lineage, and Hector's son, Astyanax. They enslaved the women, including the prophetic Cassandra, and reclaimed Helen. The fall of Troy marked a brutal end to a protracted war, signifying a pivotal moment in ancient history as it heralded the decline of Bronze Age civilizations, and the emergence of Iron Age ones. This war inspired numerous retellings, notably in Homer's Odyssey, chronicling Odysseus's journey post-war, and Virgil's Aeneid, recounting the escape and subsequent founding of Rome by Trojan Prince Aeneas. The Trojan War also offers many lessons for the art of power in the modern world. It shows how passion and pride can lead to war and ruin, and how cunning and courage can win the day. It also shows how the gods and fate can interfere with human affairs, and how humans can defy or accept their destiny. It also shows how power can be a double-edged sword, as it can bring glory and honor, but also grief and sorrow. The Trojan War is a timeless and universal story that speaks to the human condition and the human spirit. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe.